I want to begin by saying that I love my grandfather very much. But no one ever accused my grandfather of being a rule follower. He, he could be stubborn. He could be cantankerous. You could always count on him to say whatever was on his mind. So years ago, when I was still a kid, my parents invited a large group of people over to our house to witness the demonstration of Salad Master cookware. And one of the implements that was on display that evening was the Salad Master machine. But they described it as a food processor. This is it. I've grated a lot of cheese with this one. So during the demonstration, as the presenter was transforming a large bowl of raw vegetables into a smaller bowl of raw vegetables, my grandfather yelled out from the back of the room, hey, I bet you could cut your finger off with that. To which the presenter, without missing a beat, said, yes, you can, but we don't recommend it. And that is how I feel about pie charts in statistics. I have had people ask, could we make a pie chart? And the answer is, yes, you can, but I don't recommend it. However, because it is my job, I am going to teach you how to create a pie chart correctly. And then I'm going to stress all the reasons why I don't recommend it. If you are going to do a pie chart, the most common reason why you would choose it is because pie charts are compact. They fit well in typically posters. But if you are going to use a pie chart and do it correctly, you must consider data selection. Data in a pie chart must add up to 100%. You must have data that can be re represented in percentages or proportions. Pie charts work better with fewer categories, but you should limit yourself to a maximum of five categories or slices in your pie chart. The slices should start at 12 o'clock. You will order those slices clockwise, beginning with the largest and moving in descending order to the smallest. You should color or shade those slices, starting with the largest slice being the darkest, moving clockwise to the smallest slice being the lightest. Before you create a pie chart, however, there are some things you should consider about your data. Pie charts work best with a small number of categories. If you have three categories, the pie chart is more likely to work. But if you have 20 categories and you color them with a garish color palette, that is simply not going to work. I mean, it looks like candy. There is nothing informational that's going to come from that kind of pie chart. The second thing you should consider when making a pie chart is the size of the categories. Pie charts work best when the categories are similarly sized. The categories do not have to be equal sizes, but sized large enough that their categories are distinct. If you have one predominant category and a small cluster of other categories, simply create an other slice and don't try to subdivide into small slices that cannot easily be seen. There are lots of ways of doing a pie chart badly, but none is worse than using the 3D pie chart option in Excel. Why is 3D so bad? Because crossing those dimensions distorts your data. Look at this example. Which of these slices is the largest? Clearly, the red slice in the front predominates and gives the impression that it is larger. But if you look at this pie chart for any time at all, you realize these pie slices are all equally sized. They are all 25%. Putting the pie chart into three dimensions artificially inflates the size of one slice and diminishes the size of another. Now, this example is even worse. It puts the pie chart into three dimensions. It uses garish colors. The pie slices have all been exploded. The legend is far too small to read and utterly disconnected from the pie itself. It is nearly impossible to gain any useful information from a pie chart like this. Sometimes I want to look at someone who should know better, who says, let's create a pie chart with 20 categories and lots of colors. And I just, seriously, 
right in front of my salad master. The fundamental problem of pie charts is that they distort the data. Pie charts are difficult to interpret because area is more difficult to perceive than length. The slice of the pie is more difficult to interpret than the length of a line. So the obvious solution to avoiding using pie charts is to use a bar chart instead. Edward Tufte says that pie chart users deserve suspicion or skepticism. If you're going to make comparisons, use a little table or put it into a sentence, but don't use a pie chart. Of course, it would not be fair of me to tell you to not use pie charts without giving you some alternatives for the use of pie charts. Let's take a look at what those alternatives are. In the upper right, you can see the original pie chart. This is a donut chart. And you might immediately say, well, isn't that a pie chart? Yes, in a way it is. However, by adding that white circle in the middle of the pie, you create more linearity of the slices, now making them slightly easier to interpret. Therefore, if you are absolutely stuck with using a pie chart, at the very least, make it a donut chart. Now, this is a bubble chart. It again uses the circles, which still has the problem of interpretation of area as opposed to length. However, it is easier to interpret the relative size of these circles. The bubble chart, however, is not something you can do in Excel, at least not very easily. A third option is the waffle chart. This is also not in Excel. The waffle chart uses a 10 by 10 grid, where each small square represents 1% of the data. This makes the comparison of the relative amount much simpler and clearer. We have pie charts, donut charts, waffle charts. I would suggest, in general, just stay away from pastry-based data displays. They are rarely informationally nutritious. They're statistical junk food. Let me show you some better displays that you could use instead. This one is called a tree map. In a tree map, we use squares to represent proportions, with larger squares meaning larger proportionality in the data set. This also improves our ability to compare, and a tree map can further be subdivided. In this example, addiction medicine specialists were asked what interventions would do the most to reduce opioid addiction in America. 47% recommended treatment. That's the set of reddish squares. And within the set of reddish colored squares, we see that 18% recommended medication-assisted treatment, which would be like using methadone. The blue represents demand reduction. The orange, harm reduction. 11% recommended supply reduction as the best way to address the opioid epidemic. But the type of chart that I would always recommend instead of using a pie chart would be a bar chart. The bar chart can still show percentages, but it can also show raw amounts. The x-axis can be easily labeled so that we can see what the categories are and read the amounts clearly above the bars. The bar chart can be arranged in descending order using the Pareto option, allowing us to more clearly see and compare categories. But are there any good pie charts, you ask? Well, I looked around, I found two that I think pretty well work. And both of them work for really the same reason. First of all, they're only using a small number of categories. And second, they're not asking you to make precise comparisons. This example shows an increase in market share for a certain type of light fixture. The use of animation shows growth, and the pie displays the data honestly. This one actually works. And this one pains me to show. This is a 3D pie chart comparing the percentage of vote totals to the number of congressional seats won. It works because intuitively, you know that the two pie charts should be identical. And yet the fact that they are not demonstrates the designer's point about unfair gerrymandering. And yes, that was a 3D pie chart, just like the one I told you not to use. <laughs> I suppose the lesson here is that sometimes you can break the rules and get away with it. 
My grandpa would be so proud.